Hello, Pastor Carnell here. I haven't done one of these uh, book review videos in a long time, so I thought I would do one for the month of March. My last one was, I think, for the month of November of last year, and I reviewed an amazing book by Rod Dreher. He's an Eastern Orthodox columnist and blogger and author, and his most recent book is called Live Not By Lies, and that was definitely my book of the year for 2020. 2021 hasn't been going for very long, but already I can tell you that The Intellectual Life by a Dominican named A.G. Sertelange is going to be up there, not only for this year, but quite possibly for my entire life. This book, it has... <laughs> I, I'm going to be singing the praises of this book right now, and I, I, I can tell you that uh, as I've read it, I've been reading it a little bit um, each night over the course of three weeks, and I just finished it this afternoon. I can honestly say that this is a, a life-changing book for me, or as I would, or as I've described to other pastors and colleagues, a game changer. I wish that I would have read this book before college. I wish I would have read it after college and before seminary. I wish I would have read it when I came back to seminary for my vicarage. I wish I would have read it in graduate school. I'm just so thankful that I've read it now, um, even though I've been a pastor now for over three years. But this is, <laughs> let me get into it. It was originally published in 1920 in French, and it's overgone many editions through the years. This most recent edition is published by the Catholic University of America Press, and it's got a new foreword by James Shaw and um, maybe another pref a couple other prefaces added by the author. But the author died a long time ago. I think he died in 1947 or something like that, shortly after World War II. But this book has been in print since he was still alive. Um, the whole, the, the, the subtitle of the book is, It's Spirit Conditions Methods. So what A.G. Sertelange and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, but what he sets out to do in this book is summarize this short writing that the Dominican Thomas Aquinas wrote in the Middle Ages on the intellectual life. And it's the original thing that he wrote is called something like the 16 precepts for the intellect. And St. Thomas just very simply lays out 16 different um, different um well, precepts or 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 um, com com commands, if you will, for the for the person who who is using his intellect. So Saint Saint Thomas would have written that for priests and theology teachers, professors, um, bishops, archbishops, anyone who's anyone who's reading texts and teaching texts and producing producing a, a written work. And so this book is really interesting because it, it contains. A lot of practical tips, much that is of, of practical value. So, for example, Sertelange has a chapter on note-taking. And at first I thought, chapter on note-taking, what? <laughs> you know, he's writing, this, he's writing this 80 years before the Internet, 70 years before the Internet. Hasn't the Internet changed everything, the personal computer, even my phone, voice recording, whatever else uh, that we take notes on? You know, he talks about taking notes on note cards and filing them, and he talks about the incredible new Dewey Decimal System and several several other things that are that are a little humorous, but nothing that he says is is out of date, because Sertelange's point on with that chapter on note taking, for example, is that if you don't have organized notes, you don't have an organized mind, and the purpose of your notes is not to rehash and regurgitate interesting tidbits that you've read, but the purpose of note-taking is to organize your own intellect and your own way of knowing and ultimately your own way of becoming who God intends for you to be. I'd say that kind of the overall point of this book is that the intellectual life or the, the, the use of your, of your mind as a Christian, because he writes this for Christians, uh, is to not become more knowledgeable, to not acquire more of the truth, but basically to allow the truth to invade your entire life. Jesus is the way and the truth and the life, and your intellect and the pursuits of the intellect 
have the final goal of being completely conquered by the truth, overcome by the truth, by Jesus himself. So A.G. Sertelange would say that the, that the purpose of, of the intellectual life is to find Christ, uh, ultimately. And everything that you do as part of that, reading, studying, note-taking, writing, producing a book, producing a body of, of books, a body of written work, is ultimately to bring more and more people into the life of Christ, to bring more people into the knowledge of the truth. Um, wow, there, there's, there's almost so much in this book that I, I, I can't really summarize all of it adequately, but I'd say along with a couple C.S. Lewis books and along with uh, um, a couple G.K. Chesterton books, this has become the most important book in my life. Um, I'll, I guess I'll say three parts of it that, that touched me in particular, okay? Um, one thing that touched me in particular was his, I, I'd say, his philosophy of reading, or his theology even of reading. So often we think that um, the purpose of reading is to acquire knowledge, to become a better person, uh, to become more competent in whatever it is uh, we're called to do, more competent teacher, more competent pastor, more competent preacher, etc. But what Sertelange says is that reading, reading be, helps us become more of ourself, or reading allows me to become who God intends me to be. Um, a, a book is, is uh, something that should help us and guide us and assist us, but it can't ultimately, it doesn't ultimately give us God or give us the truth. Uh, let, me, let me share a passage. This is from page 172 of the intellectual life. Sertelange says, My reading must enable me to engender thought in the likeness, not of the author who inspires me, but of myself. That is, I think, the last word on the question of books. A book is a signal, a stimulant, a helper, an initiator. It is not a substitute and it is not a chain. Our thought must be what we ourselves are. When we read, our masters must not be a goal for us, but a starting point. A book is a cradle, not a tomb. Physically, we are born young and we die old. Intellectually, because of the heritage of the ages, we are born old. We must try to die young. <laughs> I put a star next to that passage, and after I read it, I just had to put the book down and think about it for so long, because the way I've always seen books or considered books are kind of the portals to knowledge, the portal to wisdom. And the more openings I have, the more knowledge I can acquire. And I've almost been not a sloth when it comes to the intellectual life. I've been a glutton uh, trying to over achieve more and more and, and discover more and more. But Sertelange there points out something so wonderful that a book should only be, a, should only be useful because ultimately we can't just rehash and, and be like a parrot talking back the things we learn from books. Books has, have to allow us to become more ourselves. A book should free me to discover who it is that God intends for me to be. A book should, should release me from those things that are holding me captive. A book should be a starting place. But the ending place has to be me, Adam, made in the image of God, uh, speaking um, from my own experience, speaking the truth of God, the things of God. I don't know, that, that chapter on books really, really changed my life. And then the chapter on note-taking. Usually when I take notes, um, I try to just pull out the author's big points, the main ideas, the theses, and put them on paper so that I can go back and retain them later. But Sertelange says that no, notes are a way of allowing you to develop your own thought. Notes should be a way of, of jogging your memory and, and, and um, enlivening your, your imagination and bringing things into focus and helping you to kind of give birth to an idea, an idea of your own. Um, and that's completely transformed my... my my, my idea behind note-taking. Sir Lange says you should keep a notebook next to your bed so that when God flashes some insight into your brain as you're going to sleep at night or when you wake up in the middle of the night, you can quickly jot it down because it's in those moments when we're relaxed, when we're open to God and to the universe that he's given us, the signs in the universe, 
then we're blessed with a moment of plenitude, as he calls it, a moment of fullness. Um, the other part that really impacted me was, was the end when he's describing the purpose of intellectual work in the first place. Um, someone who writes a book uh, for the sake of writing a book is a pseudo-intellectual. Someone who writes a book for praise, for honor, for glory, for money is a pseudo-intellectual. Um, Sir Delange points out that a Christian academic or a Christian intellectual or any Christian who uses his brain and develops something and writes something is, is, is exposing the truth for people. And so th it, when it comes to exposing the truth, uh, there is no rush, there's no hurry, there should be no hope for, for earthly gain. In fact, it, it's going to take a lot of suffering and setbacks fools will mock your work or fail to understand it. But just like a woman gives birth to a baby and has so much pain and, and uncomfort and, and fear, but finally when the baby is there in her arms and she's nursing that baby, all the thought of that fear and discomfort and pain is gone. Sir Delange says that's what the intellectual work is. Um, it might take years, it might take your lifetime to produce something, to think through something. You might never publish it in your lifetime. You might never be made, you might never be famous or known. But in the end, whatever it is you've been pursuing and thinking about and suffering with, that will prove to be a work of lasting value because you will have brought the truth and exposed it and brought it to people's minds. Um, that being said, uh, I, The Intellectual Life is a very intellectual book. Um, Sertelange frequently quotes other Catholic authors, other philosophers, he even quotes Nietzsche at a couple points, but Nietzsche has some very interesting things to say. Um, he doesn't quote him for his atheism or anything like that. Um, but uh, this is a book to slowly savor and work through, and it's a book I definitely recommend to anyone who's aspiring to be a pastor or who is a pastor, anyone aspiring to be a teacher, a writer, an author, um, any, I don't know, public speaker, uh, so anyone who, who writes and produces a body of work or, or any kind of writing should definitely read this book. It has it has changed my life. It is one that I plan on rereading many times during my life. And, uh, and it's going to be a guiding light here. So I hope you enjoyed this kind of meandering book review, The Intellectual Life by, by A.G. Sertelange, Order of Preachers. He's a Dominican monk. Highly Highly recommend it. Also, check out my review on Goodreads. I'm very active on Goodreads. Adam Carnell, my name there. Hope you enjoyed this book review. God's peace.